So the reason why I chose the anthology format, um, it's kind of like a you know, classic and appropriate for a horror series because a lot of people die, but also you can explore a mosaic of different characters through a central kind of theme and premise, uh, which was, you know, can the Korean Australian uh, community be able to overcome their Han or their intergenerational kind of immigration experiences in this country. Nightbloom is about um, essentially five stories from the Korean Australian diaspora through the horror genre. It explores themes of identity, loss of culture, the immigration experience, family and death. And it touches upon different periods and different generations. So it's an intergenerational uh, anthology series that looks at how we've found our place in Australia. Well, I think it's really great that you're trying to reconnect with your culture. It's never too late. Mm. When it comes to horror and I guess Korean culture, I think in our tradition in folklore, storytelling and shamanism, intersecting with kind of our essentially terrible history. You know, we've gone through a lot of wars, we've been colonised, uh, we've had a lot of trauma. So in those periods, we will have stories that will reflect times of trouble and ways of dealing with reality and tales of morals um, and ways of how to navigate the world during these difficult times. And I found that with these, this tradition of storytelling, uh, it was a way to cope with a lot of the trauma, trauma that was going around. And so that's my take on how horror and Korean culture are kind of linked. But you look at other like Western cultures, like, you know, post World War One, World War Two, great novels and, you know, Lord of the Rings, all these great monster horror stories or fantasy stories come out of essentially PTSD. Um, and again, another way of processing it. 엄마, 내가 그냥 구글로 검색해 볼게. 구글이 뭘 알겠어? 여기 비디오 있을 텐데. 건반이 들렸나? Yes, food did play a big role in the series in the end. It was never really the intention, but I found that through the development with, I guess, non-Koreans, a uh, safe and easy way access points to Korean culture was food. There was resistance from in that from me, but then in the end, when we embraced it in the writer's room, we do have a lot of food around our death rituals. And there's a lot of references that are very specific to each story, like the blood sausage, the chop chair, and the pancakes that we eat when it rains. So it had a very significant story element in the end, so we just embraced it. And <laughs> 제 사진 내기 전에 먹으면 안 된다고. The Goblin design and story is probably my favorite out of all. I mean, they're all my favorite, but it's the most dear to me one because it's uh, based on, you know, childhood stories of what I read um, about Korean monsters. And, you know, we have our ideas of Western goblins, but Korean goblins are quite different and, you know, they're friendly. They're funny, they're mischievous, they can be good, they can be bad. So um, and we try to design it in a way where it resembled like a big child, um, even though it's this huge goblin with blue skin. We worked with Odd Studios alongside with our makeup artist and created this goblin that almost looks like a North Korean dictator, but that was not intentional. To reflect a monster that is both endearing and cute, but scary and dangerous at the same time, which to me is a unique way of how Koreans depicted their monsters to try to teach us lessons. Like I remember when I was a child, um, if I was crying, my mother and aunties would say, if you keep crying, the monster will come and bite your uh, genitals off. Um, and you know, it's funny at the time, but it was terrifying. So it's that kind of like duality of Funny, strange monsters. <laughs> what I want audiences first to take firstly is that I want them to be entertained. I want them to be challenged in the sense that what is Australian television? Um, you know, we are trying to define ourselves um, 
as a nation and as a culture. And I think if we see that, you know, we are a multiracial country, that we do have these niche stories within, you know, the landscape of who we are, I want them to see that we are part of this country, that we've had our own unique experiences and that our stories matter. Secondly, I want this to come out during Halloween. I just want everyone to have a bit of fun. You know, there's a lot of serious content in this, but also, you know, I have goblins, I have ghosts, I have like shaman figures. It's kind of a quirky series. So yeah, just like not to take it all too seriously <laughs> um, and just to be, you know, have some entertainment as well.